so this patch in the actions from the component I would just do something like store this patch and then whatever action I'm trying to do uh, I can pass the payload just like I do with the mutations and you can pass an object on the payload so you can add as much things as you want you can also just pass a single object on both mutations and actions where you have the type over here so instead of saying this patch Instead of saying this patch increment async, you can say type increment async, so you can just send a, a, a nice object on its own. Uh, that's preference, honestly. I usually just do it like this, and then I pass whatever data I'm trying to pass into the component, into the, the store. Usually, it's more than just an amount. These are very basic examples, but usually it's like an entire object, you know, that you're trying to pass. Maybe uh, data that's coming from a database, so you have a... I don't know, maybe 10, 20 fields inside of there. So you have a pretty big object over there. Again, why not just call the mutation? This may look silly at first sight. If you want to increment the count, why don't just call store commit directly? <laughs> Remember that mutations have, a, have to be synchronous. Actions don't. So again, we can, if we're interacting with the server, which is more than likely what we're trying to do, if you do it from a mutation, it's going to be impossible for you to just do that because it's, it's, it's synchronous. It's not asynchronous. You're going to have errors. So that's why you call the actions. The actions can be asynchronous so they can return promises. They can use async, async await. Uh, and then, and then you call your mutations from there. So this is more like a real, real life example. And this example is in the UX website. You can go and visit it. If after you're done with the video, I recommend you do that. All of this information is over there. I'm just trying to uh, discern it a little bit better so you can understand exactly what this is about. Uh, you have a checkout action. This checkout action uh, has the context and the context, context you can use this right here where you're, you are breaking down whatever the context is in, into commit and state. So you can pass the object of what the context is. And that's really cool ES6 syntax commit and state and then you pass the payload which is products so, so save the items so uh, i'm saving the card so i'm saving the state as it is right now and then i go and commit i'm doing a checkout request then this is what's connecting into the server so this is my api shop by products the shop api by products pass the products that i'm buying and then i'm i have a success handler and a failure handler and this, this again, checkout success, checkout failure. So if we go back into here, I will see it like that, checkout success. Or if it failed, checkout failure. And I can see the payload as it came. It, it's really neat, honestly. And then over here on the failure, I can say save car items and I can just pass whatever state I had at that point. So this is more like a real life, uh, how, how it works. And this right here has, uh, is probably asynchronous. Dispatch in actions in components. So again, you can use this store dispatch. There is no problem with that. But again, you're gonna become your app is gonna become a lot of this store dispatch, this store mutate, this store uh, state. You know, so you want to try to avoid that. You want to use as much of the helpers as you want. You know, and as as you can honestly. So in this case, you have just like you have map state, map getters. You have map actions and you say like, okay, I want the increment action and I want the increment by. You can also do it like this if you're trying to name it a little uh, something different. Or if you have something different already in your component, you can just say add component. So this is how you can call it inside your component. This add, add increment. Uh, or in here, you will do this increment by or this increment. So these are the different ways. I usually go with this right here add and then increment so i name it and i just pass whatever uh the action is which in this case say this was increment or say this was checkout it's the same thing that's the name that's this name right here that you're trying to do compose an action so this is where you start getting more into hey what if i'm performing uh two different actions so if i'm doing the checkout and then after the checkout, I want to do um, send them a modal or a pop-up that has a specific offer. So I want to throw another action. Um, you can absolutely do that. So the actions handle promises, and the actions you can use async a load, uh, async a wait uh, 
in the in the action itself. So if you're calling the server, you can definitely use async await like I do it right over here. These conversations async uh, right here, and this is my API right here, conversation client and then get. So if you see over here, this is what's actually connecting to the server. And if I go back right here, I make my call to the server. This is the data right here, and I'm awaiting for that. So once I get it back, again, this is spreading that data. It, this is supposed to be a response, but because I know the data is, is inside the response, I know I can get it like that. And then I can commit this data, and then I can commit the conversation. So this is more for the pagination. This is more for the conversations. And then I say, hey, I don't want to keep loading that anymore. So as you saw before, the loading comes from over here. I'm getting conversations from the server and I'm waiting for that. And once I once I get that, I set this to false and I already have all this different data in my component through the state which has the conversations and I usually just use the getter over here because if anytime I want to filter this, I can just go and call the getter. So this is how I actually use it inside of the component. I just do getters right here. So I just go to the com computer instead of doing map state I just do map getters and this is how I can get them over here. And this takes me into modules. So again, if, if you were if you're working on, on a small application, which if you're gonna use UX more than likely it's getting pretty big, you want to chunk out. You want to make chunks of your big state tree. You don't want to have one file that again is 400 lines or 500 or 600. It's going to keep getting bigger with all this state data on it. You want to make sure you have modules and that each module makes change, so it make, makes sense, you know. So uh, as I shown you before, here is an example of how I use the module. So I have a conversations module, a modal module, an options module, an overlay recipients, tags, teams. So each one of these, if I was just to have one single state of truth, this will get very, very big. I have different modules for that. And as you can see, I I can just import them right into my index.js using Vuex. I can just import them like this, modules, tag users. I have them all over here. And there is a reason why I'm using these like that, like this. So if we go into the conversations module, it is namespace true. So if we go, uh, say for example, you had another module and you wanted to communicate between modules or you have a, a, a state that's named similar, you can use the namespace to differentiate from the other modules. So in this case, I needed this uh, conversations module in another module because I was doing the conversations connects into the recipients uh, module, I believe so, and or uh, right here inside the recipient conversations, I do get conversations right here. So I use my namespace right here, and I use the get conversations, so it knows that I'm talking about the conversations inside of this namespace right here. Uh, actually, that's my API right here. So because I use the namespace, I can also use root uh, modules. So I can call my modules. And let me show you the, the website so you can see that for yourself. If I go over here and I go back on modules, right here. So this has, this has the namespace true. And right here. So say I wanted to use the getters on another component right here, I can do that because I have my root getters and like this, I can just get this full sum getter, you know, so this is how I can use my namespaces to use them on other, on different um, modules. So that's how I can interchange the data between the modules rather, rather than just having one big data tree. And it, it, it's big, you know, as far as like you trying to keep it as small as possible so that it's more manageable for yourself and the team. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as like what Vuex, the, the basics go. Um, if you want, like we can go a little bit about the application structure. And this is more or less what I was showing you. You have the index.html, which is your application, the main JS, the API, which, were, which is where all your 
backend uh, server functions are going to be stored, your components, the store, which is Vuex itself, index.js, actions.js, mutations. So you see how you have everything very separated over here. Modules. And then your modules have the different, in this case, the card and the products module. And that's pretty much it. There is a little bit more about it, but I hope that this helps clarify a little bit uh, how Vuex works and what it is and how you can use it and when to use it more importantly. So you know that when it's getting too big, when you're, when you're just having to manage too many uh, events going up and, 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 and props and, and that changes um, a lot of changes because you're trying to go up, you know, all the way to the root uh, component uh, like three or four times. Then, you know, you need UX. And even if it starts small, like it'll start, it'll get bigger and bigger. So I assure you, it's going to save you a lot of time and it's going to make your life a lot easier. So thank you very much. If you want, just leave a comment. If you want to hear more about it, just leave a comment about it. And I can definitely go over and how we can make an app like this uh, together. Have a great week and I hope you really enjoyed this video. Follow me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel and have a great week again.